released all those growth hormones in those chicken McNugs. You can't just repeat what you were saying. And it, 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 it's not as funny the second time. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to attempt eight, I think eight, of trying to record this fucking thing. Uh, first, we couldn't get the levels right. Then I didn't know how to edit them well enough in post. Uh, then I just hit stop by mistake. Then I closed it by mistake. Then the cat unplugged my computer. And now we're here. And, and now we're here. So I guess that what you're saying is that if we can't do it this time, then we're just going to say fuck it. I don't know. I thought for sure after the computer got unplugged, that was, that was a fuck it to me. Okay. But here we are. I've got a cat four, on my lap. 47 seconds in. Actually, it'll be a little longer than that yeah. on YouTube because the intro is like a couple seconds long. Uh, where were we? NAC 2. Yeah. That, okay. That's the only thing new yep, in your that's life the is only NAC thing 2. Two in my, NAC 2. I played uh, the demo for it. You didn't like it? I didn't enjoy it, no. Okay. Um, at the start, I really despised it. And by the end of it, I was like, okay, the gameplay feels adequate. I mean, uh, maybe... Today, if not today, it'll be up tomorrow for sure. Uh, there will be a NAC playthrough. Uh, well, NAC 2 demo playthrough. Because I recorded it. And I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I was, I was very excited for new NAC content. I mean, it, uh, good for you? I, I just... I don't find the character models engaging. I find... I hate having to work with a locked camera, and just, I don't know, at first I was like, I don't like the combat, and then it kind of started to grow on me. I still don't like the dodge. Jeff Jojo punches. It's awesome. He's got the aura auras. He's, yeah, that's nice. Pretty good. Still doesn't save a bad game. That deflect? Oh. Mm. Okay, yeah, the deflect was pretty nice. Um, I, okay, as, as a outspoken Knack fan, I thought it was pretty good. Anything else new in your life? Not really. Not that I'm willing to divulge anyway. Well, well yeah. Because if we go into things that I knew, then yes, there are new things. I just don't want to divulge them. Duncan has a personal life that he keeps personal. What a surprise. Yeah. It's called professionalism. No, you. You. No. As long as, if I can get content out of my personal life, I will yell about my personal life for all I care. Oh, ow, cat. Okay. Let's see what she does now. I literally, well, I... I oh, I, she's going the, she's no, going the exact no, same way. Fine. She's I, going I, the I exact closed, same way. I closed the gap okay. where she got in. Um, I, I mean, literally yesterday I was talking about people shoving bowling pins up their ass in public and people noticeably got up and left because uh, they, they did not appreciate that topic. Where were you in public? I was at a bar. With? With friends. Okay. And I was just joking about people shoving bowling pins up their ass. And people just got up. And people were very disgusted by that topic. I can't imagine why. No, I, I, I have no idea. Uh, now, I am the total opposite of you. I've done a lot. I played a bunch of games. Uh, I played Danganronpa. That game is terrible. I don't know how it's popular. It could have stayed in Japan. Well, it's... It's not aimed for, like, I don't know. It's kind of like uh, Professor Layton. No, no. I said kind of, not exactly. No, it's not even close. Okay. Okay, maybe Ace Attorney would be a better. Like, no, not even that. You're looking for clues. There's a trial. No, see that. Th that's the part where okay, the actual gameplay is mm -hmm. the trial. Yeah. Which is when it stops being anything but an anime. Okay. Like, I don't know if you watched the video. That's broken. Oh. It'll never stand up. Um, instead of just being like, oh, okay, I have this clue. 
I have to play a driving mini game and collect the letters to a sentence. And if I don't collect the right letters, I can't ask the questions. Yeah. That's stupid. No, it should be you were not here at this time. What's your alibi? But if you don't play Mario Kart, you won't no, know. No, that's so dumb. That is so like I enjoyed the game enough until the trial. Uh-huh. But then seeing how that went down, it was just like, "Hey, what was the murder weapon?" I was like, "Well, it was a kitchen knife because I know that." They're like, "No, play I'm not kidding. Play Brick Breaker to unlock the knife." No. Just it was the knife. If you want to, like, skip every episode of Danganronpa, just watch the fifth one and watch me have a meltdown <laughs> when I get to the actual game. Not to mention, like, I'll, I'll ruin the end of the video. They don't tell you who the murderer was. No. That's... No, okay. Was it... It was a demo, right? It was a demo, but it was specifically part of the game that, like, was made to be a demo. This yeah. isn't in the main game. So you, they're not going to tell you who so, the murderer Well, no, I assume they would because this is... Just a like, hey, this is what Danganronpa is, and when you play the main game, it'll be totally different. They still don't tell you who the murderer was, because they're like, no, play the real game, and uh, what? I will never do that. That will never happen. It was all a lie. It literally ends with the dead guy being like, how was my acting? Yeah. I mean, as a corpse, he was fantastic. He looked pretty dead. There's a pretty deep story with Danganronpa. No, I'm oh, I'm aware. Yeah. Like, uh, it gets pretty convoluted. Uh, no, okay, on, on the nicer side of things, there's two other games. Played Saturday Morning RPG. Yeah. I'd originally toyed with it being for the channel. Instead, we did Rise and Shine. Yeah, it was a... Mistake. Mistake, because uh, I... I'm actually enjoying Saturday Morning RPG. Oh. Uh, like, the graphics are hard, but, like, the references are fun. Just dumb, dorky shit. And, like, it plays out in episodes, and every episode is, like, based on a different 80s cartoon. Uh. And I just beat the one where you fight Transformers. Uh. It's, it's, so far, it's, like, pretty charming. And, like, there's ta there's shops in town called, like, Tom's Cruises, the Top Gun of Travel. Oh, that's... Oh. And there's, like, Scruff McGruff the Crime Dog, or whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah, Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60612. <laughs> and he's in it. I can't remember. Like, that was on, like, every Americanized channel, and I can still remember it playing. Uh, now, my only... Literally, the only thing I don't like about the game is there's a lot of button mashing. Yeah. Like, to the point where I'm actually worried I might break the controller. Because, like, to do any amount of damage, you have to charge up your attacks. Yeah. Charging your attacks requires you to t mash X as fast as possible. And then certain items you use requires you to mash X as fast as possible. It, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of tapping. Oh. But, uh, honestly, yeah, if you're looking for, like, a quicker RPG... Now, is it an RPG in the sense, kind of like a uh, stick of truth? Or is it like an is it an RPG is it turn based combat? It, or? it is turn based. Okay. But like, I guess it's closer to like I don't like know what... Paper Mario. Like a lot of items have little mini games attached to them, and okay. there's like an active defense of like hit. Okay, so whatever button so, right before yeah, they attack, like, like Stick of Truth. Sure. I mean, I should know that better because I've played Stick of Truth way more recently than Paper Mario. I, what I'm saying is it's not like Final Fantasy VII or X. No, no, yeah, it is definitely a little different. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it, if for some strange reason, if anyone out there uh, bought it when I did for like $2 or whatever I paid for it, and it just kind of had it sit in the background, it's, it's fun. Like, it's legitimately funny. Mm. Uh parts of it so far drag on a little bit but that's also because i'm trying to do everything and like the the bad guys are clearly like cobra unit but they're called the hood the hood yeah and then be, i beat uncharted La La last legacy last night or yeah that, i don't know the other day it'll be up on the channel eventually it's uh uh, if you like Uncharted, it's very good. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It is comfortably in the middle. 
a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of bugs. Honestly, the most bugs I've ever experienced in any Naughty Dog game. Uh, t to spoil a section, uh, I hit a point where the game literally slowed down to like three or four frames a second. Oh. Like for several seconds. Oh, that's not good. And I've never seen any frame rate drops in, in Uncharted that I can recall anyway. Uh, and a bu bunch of bunch of movies, the t TV shows. Do you know what's really what? disappointing? Yeah. Uh, Defenders. Oh, oh! Can we talk about Defenders? I I've watched I think up to episode five. Okay, you know what? I think we're at the same part then, because I I because think I'm on the same episode. I like I've been wanting to watch it, but then when I actually you know move the cursor over to that's it. Okay, yeah, no, I've watched Defenders and I've watched the first four episodes of Castlevania, or the only four. Yeah, episodes. I was gonna say I'm pretty sure there's only four. Yeah, Castlevania, pff, love it. Yeah, it's pretty good. The sword play, oh, it's so nice. Uh, it's clearly just a, like a proof of concept. Hmm. So, I'd like to see more. Yeah, no, I would definitely like to see more. And then just, I don't know if it's the group dynamic in Defenders, or if it's just, I hate to say it, Jessica Jones, but I find that there's... They're just... It's like watching wet noodles kind of slap each other. Alright, so... We're, we're gonna spoil the first few episodes. And there's only like six, I think. A question I want to kind of ask you is... Do you think they blew their load with Kingpin? Yes. Because well, okay, it's not as a, a villain... Uh, Wilson, Wilson Fisk I, I loved I think it's actually a, a mix of two things. It's not so much they blew their load with him. And like, he's great in the show yeah. in daredevil it's the hand is literally just fucking awful and uninteresting mm. it's literally japan is scary the villain yeah and like and they try to make jokes because like jessica jones and uh luke cage are like what's this mystical shit that i don't want no part of yeah haha -ha jokes but it's real uh, yeah, and, and, like, they bring, uh, spoilers, they bring Elektra back, who no one cares. And they bring Stick back, who no one cares. And, yeah, just, the hand is boring. Yeah. They're a terrible villain. I mean, up until I think I started watching it, I was excited. Then I watched it. No, wait, then the Punisher trailer came out. And I was like... Oh, I don't know which I'm more excited for. And then Defenders happened, and five episodes in, I'm just... It's kind of weak. Okay, so I, my opinion of it is starting to turn around. Okay. But, like, the first episode was so bad I didn't finish it. I got up and left. Yeah. And it was, like, a solid week before I returned to the show, because I just was not enjoying it. Uh, the second episode, I mainly watched on in the background, because I thought it was bad. And the third episode, up until about 80 way... 80% through it. I also thought it was garbage. But when the fights start happening, I was like, okay. Even and, when the fights are well, happening, it, it I helped like, that Luke Cage watching Luke Cage fight, watching Danny fight, watching Danny fight, watching Matt fight. All well and good. I sit there and I was like, okay, this is interesting. Jessica just gets her just gets punt slapped around a little bit and then she just fucking picks up a car and just tosses it. Well, see I think they regular like in fight scenes they forget she has super strength. Yeah. Because like she'll like lightly tap people and they'll just and they'll be fine like if she they like they weren't just hit by a truck. But then when there's not a fight, you'll see her move something that weighs hundreds of pounds with relative ease and I'm like, "Well then you should be like Luke that when you hit someone, that's it. You just need the one hit." Yeah. But it's not. And her fighting is like and she makes a joke about it. She's like, am I the only one who doesn't know kung fu? Yeah, it, so it kind of makes her fight scenes boring. I don't know. She's like, I'd hate to say it, but she's like Superman. She she just comes around to finish. Like, Matt, Danny, and Luke are all like, oh no, what are we going to do? We can't be. And then she just 
comes in and says, okay, fight's done. So, when they all met up, I was like, cool. It was a fun little fight scene. I enjoyed it. And it got my attention back to at least look at the TV. Yeah. And then I liked it enough that I sat down and watched another episode right afterwards. And Now, do you find whenever the hand is, like Electra and uh, the main bad lady, Alexandra. Alexandra, are on screen, you just completely zone out? Yeah, because two reasons. I don't care about Electra. Yeah. And Alexandra is a made-up villain. They have so much shit from the comics they could take. And they were, were well, like... I don't think we... In the comics, I don't think... I don't think it's the hand... The leader... The leaders of... Or the leader... Or the leaders of the hand have ever been shown. Probably not. It's always just the hand... Or... Well, like... And they, and they changed weird things. And now I'll admit, I don't know a ton about, like, the street-level Marvel stuff. Because the bigger stuff is just more interesting. But... So they, they look after this thing called the Beast, which the Beast is in Defenders, but it's called Black Sky for no real reason. Yeah. And it's Electra. Yeah. Instead of something called the Beast, which sounds way cooler. Mm. And not only that, Electra's weapons are this psi. Yeah. Like, we all know that. And now- she still won't pick them up. And I'm like... Like, Marvel is so good. Like, love or hate the movies, they're kind of generic. But it they stick to the comics, for the most part. They just don't want to. The Defenders is entirely made up. It's all shit no one cares about. No one cares about Elektra. And, like, okay, they, they bring Elektra back. Yeah. And you, you see that she's back in one episode. Fine. Whatever. She's, her fights are fun, at least. But then instead of just saying... Hey, look, she's back, and then mentioning, oh, the hand knows how to bring people back to life, which, if you watched Iron Fist, they already touched on anyway. Instead, episode four is just starts with 20 fucking minutes of her dying, being brought back to life, and being raised to learn how to fight again. And I was like, but we knew she could fight, and we knew the hand could bring people back to life. You did not need to spend 20 minutes showing it again. It was, uh... It's pretty not great. And, like, look, Sigourney Weaver's a great actress. It's just that character is bad. The character is literally Wilson Fisk, but a girl who can't fight. But she can fight. Sometimes. Sometimes. I she, mean, she beats Elektra. But, I mean, that fight scene was so slow. Well, and it's because Sigourney Weaver is a fucking corpse. The like, head I was be sitting slow. There, I was sitting there watching that fight and going, like, this is almost unnaturally slow like out like the actress playing electra is pulling her punches kind of like they're in a tr- spot like you know when uh, you're watching uh in taekwondo or any sort of martial art and the instructor's going like okay punch punch and then he's like block yeah block and it's just slow and uninteresting and i just sat there going like i could be doing anything no else it, yeah right it, re- it really looked like they the finished product was them going through the fight choreography and not them actually trying acting it out like i get it she's an old lady well not an old, like, well you actually never see her face during the fight so they could have easily made it a stunt double and made it a interesting fight to watch yeah uh, that being said, it's six episodes, so I am gonna finish it because it's, it's six episodes. Yeah, it's a mini series, so like I'll defenders. I'll, yeah, it's only six as far as I know. I thought it was eight. Maybe it is eight. Or it's I, it's because, under ten. Yeah, it's under. We can 10. agree to that. Uh, actually, okay. Let me, let me let me look it up. The defenders. Because I was I was gonna say because I'm I'm only on episode five, and if you're telling me it's only six episodes, I don't know if I'm gonna finish it. I mean, okay, yeah, it, it is it is eight. Okay. Uh, so which I'm makes gonna... me less likely to finish it now, but I, I still will. I'm not really watching anything else currently. Uh, I checked out a new show called Elves. Lego Elves. Oh, no, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Oh. I, I, well, okay, so I sat down to eat, and I didn't want to watch something that was an hour. I yeah. wanted something that would last as long as it was going to take me it, to eat. Yeah. And I just opened Netflix, and Netflix had an ad where it was like, hey, our new show, Lego Elves. And I went, okay. It's cute. 
don't know. If it's, good. it's literally a, a, a okay. It's by the same studio that made Avatar. Uh, well, Korra specifically, and uh, looks the same and is the exact same plot. It's literally like these people each know one element each, but also there's a fifth one called love. What are you looking at? Is that a butt? Is that a picture of a butt? I tweeted that uh, get off me deck. Oh. And, and you get the porn bots. And I got the porn. The porn bots. Are porn gonna... bots are fans of the backyardigans. You heard it here first. Well, Uniqua is a very unique character. Don't, don't, don't with that. She's a pink hippo. No, she's not a hippo. Oh no! Wait, no, she's the weird thing that's not an animal. Yeah. Everyone else is an animal. Yeah, everyone else is an animal, but she's Uniqua. She looks like a real Muppet. <laughs> so, Lego fairies, or whatever the fuck it was. Elves! Elves, fairies. I don't know. It's okay. I don't know. It's, it's cute. There was jokes. I'll probably never watch it again. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Crunchyroll had put dot .hack uh, signs on. Along with Dot Hack Roots, mm-hmm. which Dot Hack Signs is what aired on YTV yep. back when I would have been in my in grade eleven. Well, I mean, now's the time. It's the fifteen year anniversary. Yeah. Um, and then I sat there, watched the first episode, and you know when they're kind of in animated shows when they're doing that pan through the scenery. Yeah. And you kind of get those weird kind of moving jiggling line like it it just doesn't look right okay. when they move because it's almost like screen tearing almost well it wouldn't be because it's <laughs> well whatever it is it's very noticeable and it may like i'm sitting there kind of going like i don't remember this and i don't know if it's because i was watching it on one of those old like box TVs, not box, like not an old box TV, but just. I don't know if it's because it's an old anime being watched on uh, a newer television, a newer television, and it's a ab- and the TV's able to pick up things like that. I mean, that's entirely possible. Like if you go watch like Blu-ray versions of movies made in like the eighties, looks terrible. Yeah, like like Star Wars, you can actually tell what's a matte painting now, because. It's Blu-ray, and it picks it up. Um, but um, going back and watching Dot Hack Sign, holy shit, that gets depressing fast. See, I've never actually seen it. Um, I only well, played the games. It uh, It's basically, I'm playing an MMO. Oh, no, I, my consciousness is trapped in the MMO. Well, yeah, it has the same plot and, as the game. Um but usually it's like, oh man, my friend, like, you played Kite, who was, in the games, you were, you played as Kite. Yeah, I didn't was... play that, it was trash. No, because you played GU. Yeah. I played Dot Hack, the, like, the original Dot Hack yeah. games, and then I played GU. I mean, GU was a little more... Kid- Better in every way. Yeah, but I mean, Dot Hack kind of started that that new that new uh the re-release of all three of them on ps4 includes brand new content oh fuck like a whole new like couple levels with a whole new fifth form oh jesus so when's that coming out october ish i think well good because we get three paychecks in october oh we do too oh yeah no october is gonna be a a good month um, but yeah, no, um, you know how they have that, uh, they have, a uh, Sword Art, they have, uh, Log Horizon, they have so many other games where it's like, oh no, I'm trapped in the, uh, the game yeah. kind of thing. Um, I think, like, where Dot Hack was kind of the first to do it. Uh, it's, I mean, it's probably not the first, but it was definitely yeah. the one that popularized it. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, it gets 
like it goes to a place that's like i don't know it's it gets really depressing really fast maybe i'll watch because i mean i remember like i'm remember fragments of it back when i watched it on my tv but there were just moments where the main character would just get so like it was like what it was like you take sword art and then you bring in our our favorite depression welcome to the nhk yeah and just smash <laughs> that right in, and you just get a like there are moments watching that show where it's just like i'm really uncomfortable good maybe i will watch it a- any excuse for me to farther delay watching uh, my hero academia or whatever oh, the fuck it's called that. no it's only room it. for one anime at a time you in my life. It. No, okay, well then you should watch My Hero Academia. Dot hack it is. Gotta get ready for the game. To play them again. Well, you should... I'll lend you some of my books. Because there are some of my, my dot hack books that happened before dot hack signed. Uh... And then there are some of my manga that kind of rework what happened in the original dot hack series. And then there, like it, it just gets convoluted, the timeline. I want to talk about convoluted. Uh, Annabelle, the creation, is slowly becoming its own Marvel san- Marvel franchise. Who? It, it, Conjuring, Annabelle. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Got ghosts. Yes. And the devil. Yeah. I saw it. Okay. It was a movie. It was a movie. Uh, it was hard for me to watch. Why is that? Well. As, as well documented, I don't like knees. And the lead character had polio, so she wore a knee brace. So her, her knee was a, a focal point of the movie, and I, I don't like knees. But, uh, yeah, no, th- this is becoming more confusing than the Marvel timeline, and it's it, it been around way less. So, so the, there's a Conjuring 1. Yeah. And, the, and then they went, oh, that... Uh, in the first one, we talked about this creepy doll called Annabelle. Yeah. So let's give it a spinoff. So it was a prequel spinoff. Yeah. Ca- called uh, Annabelle, and then they were like, "Oh, that didn't do as well as we thought it might. So let's do The Conjuring Two, an actual sequel." Yeah. And they went, "Yeah, but people really like dolls. Or so dolls they, are really scary. So they, they. I don't think people really like dolls. I think peop- people. Well, as, as horror afraid. movies. Yeah. So they made a prequel. To the Annabelle prequel called Annabelle Creation when Annabelle gets made. Okay. And in, in that, there's a nun. Okay. Who is getting her own backstory movie because the nun is the villain for The Conjuring 2. And it's this whole fucking web that they've made and it's it's trash. It's all garbage. Conjuring 1 is like pretty solid and I believe it's one of my favorite horror movies. Conjuring 2 is good. And then Annabelle is just... I mean, it's laughably bad. Like... I get putting on a horror movie with your friends and having a laugh. That's a totally different environment. But typically, if you see a horror movie in theaters, you usually are pretty composed. Yeah. The whole theater was laughing. Oh, Jesus. Because these dumb kids... And, like, the movie just... The number one thing in horror is don't show it. Yeah. Like... Don't show the movie. Leave... More to your imagination. They just straight up show you literal Satan. And it looks terrible. Their, their makeup budget was like... I don't know. Here's some... Car- was it Spawn Satan horrible? This looked like they just put blackface on somebody. Oh, and they're like, oh, it's the devil. Oh, jeez. And like the whole movie is like really tame and non-violent. And then it gets uber violent at one point. Okay. Where a girl gets ripped in half and there's intestines and some guy has his fingers bent all the way backwards and they rip off his hand and that all grossed me out because I don't like shit with fingers either. Or, you know, dislocated limbs. Yeah, well, I mean, that's pretty universal. Well, no, di- not dislocated, that. but compound fractures, I should say. Ugh. I love it. Just sending you stuff like that. Uh, but on a better note. Okay. A death note. If you will. 
Would you mind if I just took a massive shit in your toilet right now? Don't, Duncan, if I stop this recording, we might never get it back because I don't know. How because to stop I would it. rather, I would <laughs> rather evacuate my bowels than talk about Death Note. I'll okay. We can do both. I'll rant about Death Note while you go take a massive dump in my bathroom. Because I want to talk about Death Note. Do you know what else I watched? <laughs> I watched uh, Archer Season 8. Ew. Archer in Dreamland. Is this... Like, how is this... How, what? What? I... Okay, so, like, I... They reworked the whole show for, like, Season 5 or 6. Because when of it ISIS. Went, well, yeah. It, well, and the creator said they were just getting tired of it. Yeah. So they wanted to do something new. So they made the Vice thing. Yeah. I assumed that was it. Because I stopped well, hearing no, about after, the show. After Vice. After Vice. Um, I think that was season seven. Sure. I think it was five. I know one of the seasons they had to change it from ISIS to something else. Yes. And then Vice. And I think Vice was season seven. Because that's when they had to sell all the cocaine. And then I think there was a season after that. And then Archer was put into a coma. And it, then it starts Archer and Dreamland, where it's basically Archer uh, in a coma, but he's in his coma. He's kind of having this uh, no, uh, film noir kind of police, inv- like private investigator kind of thing. It, it was their excuse to change the setting again. Yeah. Is just put him in a coma. Just put him in a coma. And he's having like a little... You know who el- else was in a coma? The guy who directed Death Note. I mean... I watched reviews on it. Uh, okay. In all honesty... You've, you've never seen the anime. I... I... This is the moment where you could be that guy where you'd be like... You haven't seen Death Note? Yeah. Uh, no, okay. Again, I know you won't do it, because yeah. every time I've asked this, you never do, and that's fine, because if you did the same, I probably would also not do it. I want you to watch it. I don't want to. Because I want to know how it holds up to someone who's not seen it. I think... I think because there was like there was a YouTube video. I watched a review on it, and there was a guy who was like who was reviewing it with someone else, and he was like, "You've never seen the original Death Note." He was like, "No." It's like, "What do you think of this movie?" And he's like, "It's a piece of trash." Okay, so two things, and it's set up for a sequel. Yeah, no, it totally is. Yeah, the 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 author said and, he uh, has a sequel. Yeah, yeah. But even the way it, the it ends, it's like humans are so interesting. Uh, and even even the like it, even like the reviewer I watched, he was like, even the actor looks confused. Okay, when... I have only one legitimate nitpick with it, and it's just at one point I think the the main actor forgot they were filming, and I'm not joking, and that's in the final film, and that's my only legitimate complaint. Is he's supposed to be like one? Well, a millisecond prior, he's running for his life for, from when he first meets Ryuk. And then he turns back to where Ryuk is. She, who, he should still be frightened. And he just looks plain-faced. And I, I think he didn't know the cameras were rolling. Um, there is a bit of the original Death Note I did watch. And it was the moment... Like, I had just... I was flipping through the channels. And I had just landed on YTV. And Death Note just happened to be on. And it was the moment where L was kind of explaining to Light or Kira, whatever you want to call him, that he was one percent sure that L that what's his name Kira Light Light was Kira yeah yeah and like it was kind of that thing where it's like oh you're a suspect but I don't think it, like. You're a suspect, but I don't think it's you, kind of thing, lying through his teeth. Whereas, in the uh, cafe scene, no, no, in the movie, like, in, in, in the movie, he's, he's like, tell, the you're first, fucking, no, you're the fucking first time cured. they meet, he's already figured it out. Yeah. Uh, so, if I'm being honest, uh, because I, I am 
trying to turn over a more positive leaf in life. Oh, bullshit. I'm trying. I didn't say it was working. Yeah. So I'm trying. Uh, in all honesty, I think the movie was a good college try. It was literally just... They took 30... Like, Death Note is 30 episodes. Yeah. So that works out to, what, 10 hours? Roughly? Something like that. And tried to put 10 hours of plot in 90 minutes. You can't do that. No. Like, I think there's a enough fat you could have trimmed and made two movies out of the whole series but not one like this movie should have ended with uh l figuring it out and then cut make a whole new movie but i mean parts of it are laughable like i said there's a screaming thing but then there's also the part like kira is just just the Japanese broken English of killer. Yeah. Because of the way they pronounce words. So they would pronounce killer Kira. But in this movie, they go, he's like, I'm going to call myself Kira because that means murderer in Japan. And, and Japan. then he'll throw them off. Yeah. And I'm that. like, no, that's not why. And then <laughs> the next scene is just all these news or all these police being like, we think he's from out, he's operating out of the continent. Yeah. It's. And it's like, Wow. You guys are dumb. And, I mean, I guess spoilers for the movie, but whatever. It, the but the plot outline has existed for over a decade. Because it is the plot yeah. f- from the from the anime. Like, the, the M- Mia, I think the girl's name is, yeah. literally says, we should kill your father. And he went, no, that's a bad idea. But then, like, fuck. Yeah. Like, no, I, I, I'd i probably cut out anyone who said, I want to murder your dad. You'd probably cut them out of my life. Well, I mean, compared to her, what she was like in the anime, she, I don't think, again, I'm putting bits and pieces from what I remember. I don't remember her being like, kill your dad. I want to kill all these people. No, well, I think uh, I remember reading that instead of I think in the original because it, it's been a long time. Yeah, that light sort of starts to turn to the dark side because he has the power to murder anyone he wants. So of course he would. Yeah. Uh, where in this movie they try to keep him level-headed, and the bad influence is, is just her. Yeah. Is she's the evil side of him from the anime? So yeah. she seems like a real bitch. Because she's just pure evil. She just wants to kill she everybody. Just want, like, oh, she likes violent movies. Oh, she's so edgy. She's also a cheerleader. Calgary put out an article yesterday. Because apparently it's fucking 1940 again. Signs your kid might be a neo-Nazi. If he listens to metal. What kind of metal? It will just said heavy metal. Oh. Well, that's a shame. I thought we were past this. Okay, and here's the thing. They're not wrong. No, but this wasn't like... It wasn't signs your kid might be. It signs your kid is a neo-Nazi. So implying that if you listen to it at all, you're, you're a neo-Nazi. On this list, because it was several things... Also said, like, oh, if he suddenly makes a lot of racist remarks. Or hangs up Nazi memorabilia. I'm like, these... Hanging up a... Like, if I put a swastika flag up in my room, it should not be on the same level of... I just like Amona Marth. So now I... am a Nazi. Those are two vastly different things. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, t- two, th- two Joker prequel movies in the works. Oh, yeah. Is Jared, Le- Jared Leto involved in any of them? Not to my knowledge. So, the thing is, the one that got the most traction, because Martin Scorsese yeah. wants to make one. Doesn't he want to do it with... Uh, Leo? Leo? Leo. Apparently, that was 
fake. Okay. That, that got blown out of proportion. So the thing is, he just wants to make a Joker movie. Yeah. Which is dumb, uh, A, because it's just dumb. Uh, B, he, he specifically wants it to be not canon. So he just wants there to be another Joker movie that has nothing to do with the current DC timeline. Which, like, I understand wanting to separate yourself from that, maybe. Yeah. But, I don't know, just don't. I mean... Crazy idea. I don't know how... Because who really wants to see a story about a villain? I mean... Okay, well, okay, Joker is an interesting character. Yes, he is. I won't argue with that. And... His, I mean, he has no confirmed origin story. Yeah. There is the one that is the most widely ex- accepted, which is the killing joke. Yeah. But that's but not even his that confirmed is, origin. Yeah, because even he's like, I remember it one, one day I remember it one way, the other I remember it well, another well, the, way. The, he even says it. He doesn't even know his own origin. Well, well, the killing joke is literally just a one-off, so it was never meant to yeah. be taken as his origin. But... There, there's a quote that I'm probably going to butcher, but it's something along the lines of, I, I prefer my origin to be multiple choice. Yeah. And DC was like, what if we didn't? And actually, I can't even blame DC, because this is, this is the Martin Scorsese one. Where the DC one doesn't want to make an origin for the Joker, it just wants to make a movie about him converting Harley. Okay. Which, like... In theory, there's a movie there that's clearly would be more of a romance. Yeah. And an, I, I don't, like, we're hip enough now, we're in the know enough to know that Joker and Harley aren't remotely healthy. No. So I don't know if in today's, especially in today's political climate, you want to make a movie romanticizing abuse. Just maybe not. I mean, Fifty Shades of Grey is barely scraping by. <sighs> that movie was so... Just... I mean, I was getting bored watching it. I've never seen it. I probably never will. You'd probably get more interesting stuff. Like, what... Y- y- just go watch an actual porn, an actual BDSM porn. You'd probably get more from it than that dreck. When France is letting in 12-year-olds because it's mild. Yeah, that's pretty telling. Yeah. Oh, right. The, the thing to add uh, for the what might be canon DC Joker movie is uh, currently the guy writing it. His name is Todd Phillips. Yeah. Who, uh, no one would recognize that name because people don't pay attention to writers in Hollywood. Yeah. Wrote, uh, nothing except for the three Hangover movies. Yeah. So, uh, maybe don't. Maybe don't make that movie. I mean, the first one was okay. It was a good distraction. The second one, the I second hate on them third. because I've never seen them. Oh. So. I just assumed they're bad. Well, I mean, the first one was good, and that's all I'll say about it. And then the second and third one just felt... They literally just reused the same jokes. They tried to add new ones, but in the end, their big, heavy-hitting jokes were just jokes from the first one. Or the second one. Now... Because I unfortunately saw all three. Did you see the most recent Jim Sterling video? Put it up today. Uh, no. If I'm breaking, me- if I'm breaking the story to you, this will be a much better story. I meant to watch it, but okay. So I knew about the story. But it's WB and uh, more microtransactions, right? No. Oh, it is WB. You're right. Is it them adding? <laughs> okay. Just let them read it. So okay. I heard about this first, and then I was glad Jim did a video on it because he gave me. More insight than the original article I read. Okay. So, uh, they came out, and they're adding new day one DLC. Yeah. And it's a character. Because, I mean, that's what we what to expect now. See, I don't think that is. No, that's... Because not, cause not every company does it. Like, it shouldn't be... It's not even... Most companies don't do it, 
Yet when a company does do it, it kind of gets brushed aside as the like yeah that's just gaming today but it's not the majority of companies don't do day one dlc so i I don't know why it's such an accepted process but okay the thing with this uh uh dlc it's five bucks yeah and it adds an orc to your army yeah or uh, not an orc sorry uh he's actually a human and his name is a fort hog orc slayer yeah and now that's important because Fort Hog is a real person mm-hmm. who worked at Monolith who yep. died of brain cancer. Yeah. And now they're making him into $5 DLC. Yep. Now, in theory, nothing is wrong with this. Well, I mean... Taking a beloved person well, out of the studio... Isn't the money going towards a charity? That's the part where the problem comes up cuz no i'm I, i'm pretty sure it was only in only in the united states yeah. is it going to charity oh and only in a few states oh everywhere else it all goes to monolith or uh, wb sorry yeah and even in the states that do it's not even all of it no, it's probably like two dollars. No, it, it's uh, it it is the majority. I'll give okay. them that. It's three fifty of the five dollars. But yeah, it. I mean, it's one of those things where like the best thing I can say on it is just go watch the Jim Sterling video. It's something that like in practice is a neat idea. Like if I was working on a game and I was turned into a character, I think my family would be like, "That's very touching." But maybe don't pocket money off my dead family member maybe like help the family out pay their bills that shit's expensive yeah especially with their current uh, health care yeah like i don't even woes. know what american health care is like so like i can't imagine what well, those costs are yeah no it's really that's really kind of fucked up but yeah. One time with Funko Pops. What? 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 You hate those. Yeah, I do. Why do you want to bring them up? I want to talk about how much I hate them. Why? Okay, well, because I never thought of this. Now, I'll give credit where credit's due for the person who popped this idea into my head. Uh, I was listening to a podcast, The Comedy Button, uh, where, where Brian said uh, basically all of them were talking about how nerd culture is mainstream. Yes. I mean, all of the superhero movies are, like, the best, like, top-grossing movies ever now. Yeah. Uh, because ner- ner- being a nerd is in now. And because of that, and everyone wants their collectible, welcome to Pop Vinyls, where they're easily produced, yeah. so they can produce unlimited of them, so everyone can have one. Yeah. And, and he basically was saying, like, I think that's why pop figures exist is because nerd culture is so prevalent and everyone wants a toy now yeah you need to make something that is super easy to produce yes change the coat of paint because that's all they are they're they're all the same base yeah and then ship it out no i mean that's why like meme culture is dead because it's just been diluted to the point where anyone in uh the world has access to memes and the meme economy has just gone to sh- has literally fallen out of the bottom like memes are being generated month have been like generated monthly weekly and now they're at the point where like there's a new no, meme no, no, every week well yeah when you say meme you mean a viral meme um, it, it seems like every week there's a new a one. new meme yeah and they're just there's no at one point, memes stuck around for a while. They had value. I was going to say, what's the current meme? But it's that fucking picture know. of the guy oh, and the, the two guy girls. And the go- yeah. And I mean, that's pro- by the time next week... Like, that meme's already run its course at this point. Yeah. It, it certainly has. Popular culture has basically killed the meme. It's killed geek culture or nerd culture, whatever you want to call it. And I get 
making it accessible for everybody so that everybody can understand but then it's kind of that uh, thing that syndrome again we're going i'm going back to syndrome from the incredibles make everyone special so no one is yeah well like <sighs> we have this okay so i hate pop figures yeah because they're they're garbage and i get why people like them and it's because anything you want a toy of there is a pop figure of that yeah and so if you really want a toy or something that's just kind of how you cave and they're relatively cheap they're like what 14 bucks for canadian yeah 20 some for the bigger ones so that's reasonable but like then you've got things like uh you get your loot crates and like boy am i gonna kill any future sponsors potentially with this all of those services are garbage you get garbage materials that everyone gets so no one's special anymore yeah like well because now i i had a subscription yes you did and i canceled it after a few months because i was like yeah this is a cool toy but when i go to work and see that every 20 other people have the same toy it's not cool to have anymore my most prized possession now is a framed photograph of Mona from Nunaland because I'm the only one who has that. Oh, no one's willing to put that on their desk. Damn right. Uh, speaking of framed photos, I, I, I walked by a photo the other day that I might go and buy tomorrow. Oh. Uh, it's a painting of Jerry Seinfeld's room. <laughs> Colin, you need to calm the fuck down i get that you don't like popular things but holy shit if i ever see you drinking a kale shake i'm gonna or whatever new kind of i used to be exclusively kale shakes i used to, I used to only i used to never eat breakfast it was just kale shakes every day every breakfast anyway that's my meal next time i see you drinking something that's not a coke or a milk or anything else that's pot within popular society where's, where's water fit in i drink a lot of well, water water's popular coffee coffee's fine colombian colombian's fine yeah tea tea's fine okay what can i not drink just kale coconut shakes? water i like coconut water you piece of trash <laughs> you hipster filth i i don't deny it I, I, okay, let's talk about food for a second. Okay. Because I tweeted about this. I was very excited. I bought Cookie Crisp. Yeah. A cereal that does, to my knowledge, doesn't exist in this country. Up until recently, it did not exist. It was nowhere in Atlantic Canada. And so I... You'd have to go across the main callus border. So, so seeing a box of it, and it being the only box on the shelf, I had to buy it. Okay, what's it like? It's fucking terrible. <laughs> It's such a letdown. It tastes like nothing. Yeah. And like, if I could only have one breakfast food, it would be cereal every day. You, you, I love cereal. You, you rant about this. I got to dump ass. I'll, well, I thought you were going to go a long time ago. Well, I tried to hold it in as long as I could. So Duncan is a, is a real trooper. And now, instead of letting me rant about Death Note, where I have tons to say... Now I have to talk about cereal, which I have significantly less to say. What, what is your favorite cereal, fellow listeners? Uh, comment below, and I'll tell you how wrong you are. Because the right answer is Raisin Bran. Raisin Bran is the best cereal. Actually, I don't even know if I believe that. I don't know if I can pick a favorite. But what I'm saying is, Cookie Crisp had a chance. I was legitimately expecting just cookies, just little cookies in a bowl that'll give me diabetes immediately. And I did not get that. I got cookie shaped air that tasted like air. And then when left so soaked in, okay, actually, if I can give a positive, if you leave it in the milk and then you deal with the sawdust cereal, the milk 
is amazing. That's some good. That's some good cereal milk. Also, I don't know how it took this long for people to do it, but they they finally in some places sell cereal milk. Like I'm pretty sure I saw that you could buy milk that just had Fruit Loops floating around in it, which sounds disgusting. But Fruit Loop milk also delicious. Also, I hope the mic sounds fine because I picked it up to be cool. Now that it doesn't have to try and pick Duncan up. Uh, what what else? What else can I talk about? I don't know what else I can talk about. I only got one more thing, and I got I got wait for Duncan for that. But Duncan's 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 taking a poop, and I'm a professional, so I gotta I gotta keep talking. I can't pause this because it's stated earlier. If if I pause it. I don't know what'll happen. I might never get this recording back. So, you know what? Let, let's talk about movies. Let's, let's go back to movies for a second. Uh, I, I was reading an article the other day that stated, oh, it just knocked something over. That stated that uh, last weekend, I think, was the uh, lowest box office earnings since 9-11. Which I totally believe because there's nothing playing. Like, I, I'm pretty down to watch almost anything. I'm not really picky. I just like seeing movies. And I'm not remotely enticed to see anything that's playing, both all of last weekend and this weekend. I don't even know the next movie that's coming to theaters that I give two damn about. I smell tuna. I don't like it. Duncan, how do you feel about tuna? I don't like tuna. Okay, good. We can agree on something for once. I prefer salmon. I don't like fish. Ow! Damn it, I hate your table. Look, I know it's okay. borderline invisible. Okay. Several things. One. Cereal? Your bathroom yeah. is like an Italian vineyard. Because there's plastic plants? Yes. I didn't see the, the little cockroach friend, so I didn't immediately want to burn down your apartment. <laughs> Three, while I do agree with you that Raisin Bran is delicious, it's no Reese Puff cereal. Shut up, cat. No, like I said, I backed off it being the best. I don't know if... I don't know what is the best. It's too... It's, there's too many cereals. Cookie milk's disgusting. I'm sorry. No. No. Okay. Okay. No. No. Cereal milk's gross. No, it's amazing. I will tell you a story. I never put milk in my cereal. I mean, that's fine. Because I Cereal think stands I, on its own. I, I, I don't like... What's up, cat? You don't like milk? No, I don't like uh, soggy cereal. That's why you eat it fast. But then what do you do with the milk? You waste you milk. You drink it. Okay. It's just milk in a bowl. But I don't like white milk. Put in chocolate milk. I don't know. I'm not that... I don't know how I've never done that. You've never done that? It's That's a taboo, Colin. <laughs> anyway. No, you let the cereal soak so, you. Let Man me up. Let, let me tell my story. I went to Montreal for a funeral. Mm -hmm. And we were staying at this uh, B&B with this... With this l Tales of the Crypt Keeper looking l old lady. Okay. And, uh, we, like, we were going out, doing the whole thing. First time I ever saw an indigo that was pra that was bigger than the St. John Library. I mean, our library's not that big. But this was classy. Okay. It was real nice. Um, one morning, we're going, uh, she, she's providing us uh, breakfast and she's like hey little one because i'm pretty young at the time do you do you want milk do you want some cornflakes and I'm like yeah sure i'll have some cornflakes and then she's like do you want some milk in your cornflakes i'm like uh no just just give me the cornflakes it's fine it's good and she lo looks at me this little old french canadian woman and is like excuse me it's like i I don't want milk in my cereal. And she's like, I've had Asians, I've had Africans, I've had people from Europe come to my bed and breakfast. 
Every one of them had preferred milk in their cereal. You. You, a fellow Canadian. Uh-oh. Dude, Colin? No, it's fine. Okay, it's fine? That's okay. fine. It's like, you do not want milk in your cereal? No. no. Screen just went to sleep. It's fine. I don't want that. No, it, it's... And I, I, I thought she was, like, another one of those... Uh, what, what, the riots that happened in Quebec in the 1980s. That, where that, someone was assassinated. Do, do you mean the, the guy who just, like, killed 11 women or something? Riots over that? I, I don't know. I don't read the news. It was back in the 1980s. <laughs> I don't know. Someone was assassinated. I, like, I, I don't know. Like... I, I guess being around, like, my, my mother would regularly eat dry cereal. So, like, mm. it wasn't super weird to me. I would never do it, but that's also because I like milk. But, like, yes. don't even get me started on... Okay, milk conspiracists? I hate those people. Oh. Milk conspiracists. Well, there's just people who, like, yell at how unnatural it is for us to drink another creature's milk. Which, like, they're kind of not wrong... But at the same time, shut up, it's delicious. Would you drink dog milk? I'd try it. I don't see why not. Look, I've always said this, and I'm a firm believer, that I will try anything. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care what meat it is, what body part it is. As long as I can be assured it was cooked properly, I'll try it. Guinea pigs. Sure. They're not even fit for pets. I would I try would consume any. The only pet I wouldn't... Like, I'd have a... I couldn't eat my own pet. Mm. But, you know... I'm, I'm told dog is quite tasty. You kick it first. That's actually what made me not want to try dog. Is the proper way, the best way to prepare dog is before you kill it is you kick the shit out of it because abuse releases some kind of you know uh, mixes like testosterone and like some fear hormone it just really juices that meat up and that is the best way to prepare dog oh boy if we ever wanted sponsors before we're not getting them this today We've said worse. Probably. Now, there's something... I I don't know how much you'll be able to talk about this. Because you, to my knowledge, have not played a lot of games where this is applicable. Okay. But choices in video games. Mainly a telltale thing. There's really not a ton of games that have choices in them. I guess Mass Effect has some, but... Yeah. Okay. So, my, my first base question before I get into it. Is... I don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> do you, Okay, do you like having choices in games? I mean, if the choice has real consequence. Okay, so... Now I know what I was going to say. Should When games are made, yeah. should they be made to enjoy one playthrough? Or should they be made that you're constantly amazed no matter how many playthroughs you do of it? Because I think it's just the one. It's made to be played once. And the only reason why I say this, or ask this, is I firmly believe that the illusion of choice is just as good as real choice. Because if you don't do a second playthrough, you don't know that your choice changed nothing. Mm. And that sort of, you know, if you're playing the game twice, you're purposely trying to, you know. I mean... Like, is it nice when it is, like, a choice that actually changes the game? Of course. Yeah. But I don't think a game should be criticized when it's like, oh, your choice didn't matter. I don't think it matters if, as long as you think it mattered at the time. 
I mean, I couldn't tell you how many times I've replayed uh, Revengeance from start to finish. The game has choices? No, it doesn't. But, 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 why are you even talking about it? To get a better score. Uh, it's like in Bayonetta. Why would you replay it? To get a better score. But we're talking about choices, and you're like, oh. yeah, Revengeance is a great game. I don't know. I, I um, In a game like Mass Effect 2, if you don't do certain things right, characters can die. Okay. Now, imagine... But, I mean, it's so hard not to do everything right. It's kind of like, why would you... Okay, so imagine if the choice... You know, someone had a, a gun to their head or something. Yeah. And uh, your choices are save them or let them die. Yeah. And if you save them, well, they're saved. And if you let them die, uh, they just take care of the guy themselves and they live anyway. Which means it changed nothing. Well, that But at the time... Until you replay it, you don't know. That. You would not know. So that that's my question of like, is the illusion of choice well just as effective? Because if you don't know it doesn't change anything. Does it change the person's perspective on you? Like I feel like a lot of people who complain about uh, Telltale games and like don't get me wrong. Telltale games have a lot of other problems. Oh yeah. The illusion of choice is not the first thing to help. <laughs> like, hmm. But unless you're playing it again, or you're... Maybe a stable frame rate. <laughs> unless you're playing it again, or you're talking to your friends, like, your choice... Like, you... Telltale's a bad example, because Telltale, we all know none of their choices change anything. Mm. So every time you make a choice in Telltale, you just go, oh, it doesn't matter. Because it'll happen anyway, or it won't happen anyway. No matter what you pick. But, uh, like, uh, the last game I played that I enjoyed that had choices in it was uh, Least of the Painful. Yeah. Now, there were some choices that, like, made me, like, just pause the game and sit there for a long time. And even if it changed, like, if I found out, oh, yeah, it didn't matter what you picked, I'd still feel like that was good game design because at the time I thought it was a real choice it'd be like it's disappointing if you find out it meant nothing yeah but in the heat of the moment I mean in the heat of the moment in Mass Effect 3 when you're uh, choosing like there's a thing I can't remember what it is but it's you choose between the Corians or uh, the synthetics. Fuck. Uh, the the synthetic army. I'm just going to refer to them that as that. I'm not. I can't remember what they're called, but um, the Corians are about to like they're taking heavy casualties. Um, the synthetic army is about to attack. Your options are uh, release a virus that'll kill all the synthetics, and or release a virus that'll delay response time to the synthetics for a few seconds, giving the Quarians enough time for a counterattack, wiping out the synthetics. Um, side with the synthetics, or side with Legion to help the synthetics. That will, uh, his, he'll insert a virus or something that'll cause them to go on, that'll basically cause them to, uh, turn good, but it'll take too much time, co possibly compromising the Quarian army and wiping out a large majority of them. And I think there was a third option if you had done a series of other things right that pops up where basically Shepard yells at the two of them to grow the fuck up and stop being little racists and, and, and as anyone knows the choices of Mass Effect 3 did not matter but the, at the, the end, time the, the, the end choices don't matter 
but some of those like in like leading up to those end choices there are some serious consequences like characters die if you don't make correct or depending on the choices you make for example if you choose if you choose to side with the synthetic army one of the main quarry and le- like uh the, the, the fucking the 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 main quarry in love interest throws herself off a fucking cliff. So what you're telling me is you're pretty ecstatic that Andromeda is done with and not getting any DLC. Is as, as Duncan dies and just stares blankly at nothing. I am so upset about that game. Knowing. Well, because you didn't hate it. No, I didn't hate it. I was disappointed. Well, it's the it's the it's. I know what they wanted it to be, but they gave it to some no name studio in Quebec. Bioware, a known non known studio. Well, I mean Bioware Edmonton. Yes, that's where most of the good Bioware games came from. And then they started expanding, and they had one in Mon- in Montreal, and it was a relatively unknown, unproven studio of Bioware that was mostly done for like mostly used for outsourcing smaller things. But they were given full reign on a project, and just the nightmare that ha- happened is just ludicrous. And now that they've really shown Anthem, mm-hmm. it's like this feels what Mass Effect should have been. Yeah, but now now for you, they can make you buy two games instead of just one. All I'm saying is that the new Dragon Age that they that there's rumors about. I hope so. I like Dragon Age. Better be f- fucking good uh was it you who told me that anthem is going to be like an mmo yeah it's ba- uh, anthem is basically going to be ea's answer to destiny uh, gross yeah i don't want any part of that basically it's going to be like call of duty and battlefield don't okay you can't say it's their answer to destiny but it's also like these games that aren't even remotely similar. Well, I Because mean, Call of Duty is nothing like Destiny. No, not Destiny. Battlefield. Oh, I thought you meant it's like Call of Duty, Battlefield, and no. Destiny. You mean how Battlefield yes. and Call of Duty are yes, essentially the same game. Yes. You, you want to turn me off most games immediately? Tell me it's online. It, it's online. Gross. That being said, pr- pretty excited for Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter World? Yeah. That's for the Switch, right? No, it's for the... Ah. Uh, is it not also coming up for the Switch? I, I doubt it could handle it, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. Someone's cooking hot dogs. They sure are. It smells delicious. Mm. Uh, I suppose it is like one minute to five. It, it is. It is it's, it's about that time to cook. Oh, I started playing the Uncharted mobile game. Because I, I did a deep dive of research before I put up the, the Uncharted LP on, on the YouTube there. Uh, that uh, to anyone who doesn't know, again, uh, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, most people, I think most people think it is the fifth game. Yeah. Because there's one, two, three, four, five, or yeah. one, two, three, four, and Lost Legacy. It is the ninth after doing some research. <laughs> there are too many of those fucking things. Because the series has only existed for 11 years, I think. Nine and eleven years is not great. That's too many. That that is a lot. Like how many are how many Assassin's Creed games are there? One, two, three, three again. No, wait, one, two, two again, two again, three, four. That other one that came out with four. Unity and that new one. And then the three Chronicles games and the PSP Mother game. God. Then the uh, iOS game, then um, sixteen. Looking at about sixteen. 
in in the same amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I, I I didn't even count the new one that comes out next month or two months. I don't remember. So recently. I've noticed that there's been a lot of clout behind the uh, Metal Gear Solid movie. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited for it. Okay. Really? Yeah, uh, I listened to a talk with the director, and like he seemed like a pretty genuine. Now, now, okay. The problem with any big movies is it doesn't necessarily matter how good the director is. Yeah. It matters where the money's coming from. Yeah. Now. I don't know if this is still true, but this was true a handful of years ago. That because Metal Gear is such a huge selling franchise that Sony said they're willing to help fund the production. Okay. Because that's one of their babies. Uh, So if it's coming from the people who want it to do well, being made by a legitimate fan, because uh, I think his name is like John Voight. Roberts or something. What? Just, just read it to me. I, I can't. Hiro Nakamura from here is just producing it. That's that's the. Oh, that's for a Mega Man movie. Okay. Yeah, Hiro Nakamura did the Death also movie. Also produced the. Ne- yes, he, he's just the producer. It doesn't really mean anything. He did put himself in the movie, which is kind of dickish, but it was fine. Nice. He made, to anyone who watched Heroes, it was a good reference, apparently. Because he just said, oh, this and the Nakamura clan haven't battled in ages. And his name is Hiro Nakamura from from Heroes. I just never... That's a really dumb name. <laughs> to be in a show called Heroes and your name is Hiro? That's not great. Uh, but yeah, yeah the, the guy who is in line to direct the Metal Gear movie, if it ever takes flight, seems like he knows what he's doing. I was going to say... I trust him. It's the a... guy who did Kong Skull Island. Yeah. In a recent interview, he wants to make it co- like co- like a Kojima. Well, he, he specifically said the thing that everyone else would get wrong is they would make it like a generic like Tom Cruise Mission Espionage. Impossible movie. Yeah. He's like, the biggest thing with Metal Gear is its tone. And that's what he wants to nail. And I was like, cool, you sound like you know what you're doing. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm still waiting for, uh, you know... A uh, knock it out of the park video game movie. There are uh, none. <laughs> uh, I I don't know if there ever will be. There's a handful in production, but who knows if they ever get anywhere? Because by definition, Metal Gear Solid is in production. Mm. Uncharted is in production. Uh, Sonic is in production. Oh, that live action CGI. I, I don't imagine that sticks, but that is... They've never said anything otherwise. Yeah. A good video game movie would be nice. But at the same time, you know, just, just play the game. I don't think there could ever be a good video game movie. I think there can. Because I, I, I legitimately Because no think... matter what you do, they're not going to get the source material right. Because they're going to want to adjust it for a mass audience. So everyone can kind of appreciate it. And by watering it down, it's going to be awful. I I don't agree only because if books can be done right, games can be done right. It just takes not greedy people. Yeah. It it takes someone who has the know-how to go, this was popular because it's good, so let's not change it. And, like, I get changing some things. Like, any, any diehard Harry Potter fan knows what they changed in the movies. Mm. But everyone, fans of the book, agree, those are universally well... Like, I think everyone would agree they're the best... Adapted. uh, Adapted media ever. Yeah. And now it helps that they made eight movies. One book a movie. That's how you do it. Or, yeah. Lord of the Rings wasn't bad. That's true. That's true. Hobbit was awful. They're fun. No. I, I I enjoy them. I'll be honest. The Hobbit movies, I just got sick watching. 
like actually sick. Like I wanted to throw up. It's that high def. You you you, you mean sixty that frame? It's, it's forty eight. Forty eight, whatever. It's a weird number. I know. It's what they uh, use for I think British daytime TV. Like, uh, no, British daytime TV just has this weird frame smoothing thing on it. Yeah, it looks very strange, but it's not actually recorded at forty eight. Okay. But the Brits also use twenty five frames a second, and we use twenty four. I don't I, I don't know why. Is it is it twenty five on Bob? It should be. It's a I British it's show. 20, I, th- I think it's twenty. I don't know. I know Little People's twenty five. Because for a British company. Hmm. But uh, yeah. I don't think I can pad this out for another 10 minutes. I ain't got shit unless you do. Um, no, I got none. Oh, good. Good. Are those Gundams? Oh, those were Gundams. Oh, that's Gundam Zeta. Is it? Yep, that's Zeta, Zeta, yep, Zeta Gundam. RG14414 Zeta. That's the scale, Colin. 144 Phil Collins orders a pizza and gets fingered. That's I don't even I don't even know the context of that tweet, but that makes me laugh. <laughs> Alright, I gotta read more of these. Phil Collins Home Alone and Horny. Phil Collins Masturbation Come Technique Extreme Edition PC exclusive. <laughs> Phil Collins eats the dick and slowly dies. Phil Collins stuffs his turkey butthole with cum loads. Oh, this is going off the rails. <laughs> Phil Collins sits on Santa's lap, gets unexpected holiday anal butt sex. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Phil Collins can feel it coming in the air tonight. Eats it and dies. <laughs> I think we should end it here. Nope. No. Oh, my God. This <laughs> all ends with shit. I forgot these were Facebook posts and not tweets. <laughs> There would be okay, cause like I'll tweet a lot of dumb shit that yeah. if I were to accidentally post on Facebook instead of Twitter, I, I mean off the balcony I go. <laughs> I mean it, it's like there was an image where it's like this is you on Facebook, prim and proper. You're wearing a a, a, a button up shirt and your hair is you know all clean <laughs> to the side, and then you on Twitter, and it's just this picture of this kid with like in one hand like he's just stark naked his dick's hanging out his hair's all a mess and he's got five o'clock shadow he's got a love pillow in one hand or he's got a body pillow with an anime girl on on one hand and then a bottle of alcohol in the other and he's just like in an iron horse stance going like i'm a little gremlin uh you, you know what basically what i'm saying if my parents ever saw my twitter account i don't think i could ever show my face back in St. John or New Brunswick. I've been on a pretty clean streak, actually, because I just went and looked through at the the last few of my tweets. I've been pretty alright. It's that uh, turning over a new leaf. Uh Oh. You know? Literally the most vulgar thing is a retweet where the tweet was what the fuck. That's the most vulgar thing I've said in, in weeks. Anyway, you, you got got an anime for the the, the children, Duncan? I don't. I, um, I watched that one. Anime for the children. Or anything. Robotic notes. I, I, I think we're at the point where we're going to have to stop recommending anime and just make it general recommendation. Oh. Okay, well, no. Just... I mean, if you got anime still. Yeah, robotic notes. It's a pretty neat anime I'm watching currently. It's about an anime club. It's about a club that uh, is trying to get the funds together to build a giant robot. Uh, Now, I'm going to go a little left field with my recommendation, which is if you're about to watch My Hero Academia, watch anything else. No, watch it. My my anime recommendation this week is don't watch My Hero Academia. Watch it. 